Hey, my name is Matt Jumper and I am a designer and no code developer. And so far in 2023, I've been able to talk to over a dozen companies looking to make the move to Framer. And they've ranged in sizes from small businesses all the way to companies worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So why are these companies running into Framer? I'm gonna break it down for you in this video, including a walkthrough of an actual client website that I delivered that will show you exactly what I'm talking about. But to answer the question with a very simple answer, it's because they want to enable their internal teams to take control of their website. And that essentially leads to three main things. Um, so if I told you that you could make changes to your website like 10 times faster than you're doing now, reduce your external costs, and keep your teams focused on the actual projects that they own and are supposed to be working on them, why wouldn't you take that offer? It's kind of a no-brainer when you think of it that way, but up until now, it's never really been a realistic option. So if you think about the background and just like the, the context of the, the current processes of what what it means to build and maintain a website like up until now or like what we've been accustomed to. A, a large enough tech company to have an internal design and development team that is capable of building and maintaining your site. Now this doesn't have any hard costs associated with it, but allocating time for design and development from a product team can be an uphill battle. Trying to justify taking them off other projects is a very hard task to do. Um, and I've seen this firsthand. Or B, you have a outside agency that you hire to basically build this site, which is pretty common. And then after the initial launch, there's typically like some ongoing costs or a maintenance agreement, some kind of retainer. These agreements all look different, but basically any updates you make to the site are going to have some price tag associated with. It. However, most agencies would deliver a CMS to you so, you so you can edit content, but it's really only the items that you've agreed upon that require frequent changes, um, you know, like a blog or projects and case studies or team, anything that's just uh, updated often. So there's a lot of variables to those scenarios, of course, but both of them are slow and costly processes. The other thing to note is that the people that work for your company and have all the knowledge and make all the decisions to edit, update, evolve, scale, and like test your website are not the same people executing them, which makes sense. Um, and to be honest, as, like, as a designer, sounds like a good thing to me because if I delivered a site to a client and then I knew that they were just going in there editing stuff outside of the CMS, uh, that kind of sounds like a nightmare because they'd probably break some shit or make it look ugly. I don't know. Um, but Framer has changed that. So if you watched my last video about why I chose Framer over Webflow, you'll remember that the main reason is because of the incredibly intuitive interface and how little of a learning curve that it has compared to Webflow. That doesn't just benefit me and how fast I can make a site, although that is a huge benefit and that's definitely part of it. But this is actually the main reason uh, that I hear why clients are actually coming to me to build them a Framer site. It's because it's so intuitive that they can actually update everything themselves. And I'm not just talking about the CMS. So I recently worked with Whereby um, to move their marketing site over to Framer. So I'm gonna show you my top three game-changing features that allowed me to give their team complete control over their site and ultimately just makes it so easy for them to, like for me to pass them the keys and actually like empower their team to go do their shit and not have to call me every week to update something. So the first thing is the CMS, which is Nothing new, obviously like every website needs a CMS. The way that we've set this up with Whereby, the dynamic pages are set up just as you'd expect them to be. So webinars and books, for example, um, similar to a blog where we've just populated the title. Um, I've preset different font font size variables for them. Um, the button copy dropped in the description, do an SEO specific description, the hero color, I've configured the different uh, color blocks for the background. Um, toggle on if it's an upcoming or not upcoming event, um, that kind of thing, HubSpot ID. So that stuff's nothing fancy, but just to show you a bit more of what the CMS can do, um, we can go to, we've broken down features by um, product type that they have. So we have the feature, I can put tooltip copy in here. So when you actually interact with the, with the table, um, we get the tooltip um, and then the different prices and uh, info for each one. And then even the features page itself, uh, each feature is a CMS item. So we have the name, the description, uh, the category for it, drop in a custom icon, say which product it's uh, available for, um, and then basically just like click and drag and rearrange them. So again, it's nothing complicated, but you can use a CMS in a bunch of different ways and it's not just limited to a blog or a team page. Yeah, and we also have it for the navigation. So instead of having uh, the client go into the kind of complex setup navigation that I've I've created. They can do that all from the navigation CMS. Um, and this is basically all set up. So anything they don't fill out, um, sections are going to hide and it's configured based off of what's populated. But yeah, so the CMS isn't anything crazy, but if you have a creative brain mixed with the technical know-how, 
uh, you can do pretty much anything. But the second thing is the ability to effortlessly edit inline content with customizations and pre-made configurations. So I've made pretty much every content block on this site uh, based off of uh, a component. So a lot of them are connected to the same components with different configurations. So for example, if you were to take this hero on the meetings page, um, you'll see on the right, if you scroll down, these are all the variants or the, uh, the things that you can edit within this. So it doesn't look like a lot, but I can basically go here and say, okay, I want this to be a gray background. And then now I want it to be a green background. Um, and all of these, uh, the text color and the badges and all that stuff changes. Um, cause I've, I've set that up as a configuration, but it's super easy for the client to go and just make this change. Um, then I can say, oh, I want it stacked or I don't want it stacked. And then I want to change the badge color to these configurations. I want to change badge text or it's like, no, I just want to get rid of the badge. You remove the text, it goes away. Any text or anything that you basically remove, it just gets deleted. Reviews, I can toggle this on or off. Um, the video, I can change to an image. Um, the link colors, you know, we can change this to green. Let's kill that second button. Um, change the link to the first one. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that you can do in here with a single component um, and without breaking anything. So we'll go down to the logo grid and we can do the same thing where I can select, you know, the first logo. These are all the, the um, preset uh, logos that we've dropped in in the library so I can change this keep changing them and I can say you know what let's just kill these ones and we've set a minimum of three again going back to the idea that they can't break it where it's like oh we just want one logo or it's like no that wouldn't work you need at least three so that's where I feel really comfortable basically giving the keys to the client to maintain a site that has a standard that you delivered and they can go wild and, and update everything themselves I think they'll give you a good sense of the um, these components. And we have this component, for example, where there are the four tabs and custom icons and videos and all that. So it's all, this one gets a bit long, but again, this is done in line here where I can just drag uh, this component anywhere and edit all this content. So the last thing is the component library. Um, I wanna call it drag and drop, not technically, but it's pretty close. Um, You've seen how powerful all the components are um, alone. So I basically compiled all of them and put them into a canvas page. So the client can come in here and say, okay, you know what? I want a, um, an FAQ on this new page in building, or I want to add um, this grid of four callouts to an ex existing page. Um, they can come in here and do that, or they could go to an existing page already and you know, maybe they duplicate it as a starting point or they take something that's already populated with content copy and paste that over to another page, and it's that easy. So as a bonus, uh, a fourth reason, um, I've been talking about how awesome the Framer product is, but I've also heard multiple times that the Framer team is actually a big part of the reason why uh, these companies are making the switch. So they basically say that they've chatted with the team and they just like find them super helpful, super um, communicative, uh, super kind. And I love hearing the feedback because like I feel the same way when I chat with them. Their team's A+. Um, and everybody who gets a chance to interact with them says the same thing. So if you're a company looking to make the move to Framer, hopefully this video helped you uh, learn a bit more about it. But if you're a designer or developer working in Framer and looking for some opportunities and some advice, um, hopefully you can see uh, the big opportunity sitting in front of you. It's kind of, cr everything I went over is kind of crazy. It was like, even before thinking about the fact that I can do this without code. Um, so we're definitely entering a new era and you know, I've been a designer my whole life working with developers to carry out my visions, but this year I've been hired by multiple companies that have internal design teams that brought me in strictly to do development, which I've never done before. Um, that's insane to me, but here I am.